Meet Klaus Schwab, head of one of the world's most powerful and influential NGOs. How much say does he have over your country? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. So the whole idea of a democracy is that the people have the power. Politicians are beholden to the voters. The reality can be a little different. There are a lot of different kinds of groups and organizations that can influence politics, but NGOs, non-governmental organizations, might be the most mysterious. They're not governments, they're not businesses. Some of them are charities, some of them aren't. They can be small little things or massive and widely influential. But in general, NGOs are private organizations that are privately funded and privately run with about as much transparency as a brick. I mean, would you trust this guy? This is Klaus Schwab, head of the World Economic Forum. It's one of the more influential and controversial NGOs. You might know the World Economic Forum as the organization responsible for the annual Davos Agenda Summit in Davos, Switzerland, where thousands of prominent business leaders, politicians, activists, and others meet to discuss how they can shape the future of the world. For example, the initiative they call the Great Reset. Here's a little video about it. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives. But it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity, a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. Improve the state of our world? That sounds good to me. But how? In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model, putting people and planet at the heart of global value creation. Putting people and planet first. Awesome! But what was that about evolving our economic model? Here's how they explain it. You'll own nothing and be happy. So who would own everything in this scenario? Oh, so it'll be owned by Amazon. Got it. Did this mean we're just going to rent everything from Amazon instead of buying everything from Amazon? But the World Economic Forum is so much more than just the Davos Summit or the Great Reset. Mr. Star Wars cosplayer here also talks about how the World Economic Forum works with the best and the brightest to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. I really can't imagine why there are so many conspiracy theories about them. One of the ways the World Economic Forum shapes global agendas is through the Forum of Young Global Leaders. It's an educational organization that has some very notable alumni. I'll tell you who after the break. Welcome back. So one of the World Economic Forum's biggest goals is the Great Reset, a world where we own nothing and are happy. But the World Economic Forum is just an NGO. How can it guide individual countries to make these radical changes? One of the ways is through the Forum of Young Global Leaders, a sort of internship program to prepare the leaders of tomorrow. It was founded by Klaus Schwab in 2004. According to their website, its goal is to mold young leaders into people who will shape a more inclusive and sustainable future. Each year, a cohort of up-and-coming leaders between 28 and 38 years old are selected to spend five years in the program. The program has a large number of noteworthy alumni, including Governor of California Gavin Newsom, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, former U.S. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and author and anti-racism activist Ibram X. Kendi. You've probably heard of them. And the prominent role these alumni play across society illustrates exactly what makes the World Economic Forum so influential. The Forum for Young Global Leaders was a spin-off of an earlier organization called the Global Leaders for Tomorrow that Klaus Schwab started in 1993. And it also had some noteworthy alumni, such as Tony Blair, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos. 
With so many high-profile alumni, the World Economic Forum seems to have potentially left its mark on every aspect of modern life, from politics to technology. So what exactly is the World Economic Forum teaching these people? We have no idea. No one seems to know exactly what kinds of things are presented to or discussed by the young global leaders. But one alumnus saw it as a place that did not exactly welcome dissenting voices. Richard Werner, who was part of the cohort of 2003, explained the situation. I and also several others in the cohort, we asked a lot of questions and they were usually critical questions. That didn't go down too well, I suspect, and may have been the reason why um, after the second year, um, we were told, everyone was told, oh, sorry, this Global Leader for Tomorrow program had to be abolished for I don't know what reason, sorry. But then a few months later, we noticed that, oh, they have a new program, which they didn't tell us about. It's called Young Global Leader, which is essentially the same. So they just got rid of this cohort by changing the program. So Werner is essentially saying he believes that he and others in the program got kicked out for asking critical questions. I guess asking too many questions is not part of shaping the future. So what happens when some of the World Economic Forum's leaders of the future become the leaders of today? More after the break. Welcome back. Klaus Schwab is very proud of some of the alumni of his young global leaders. Here he is bragging about just a few of them in 2017. When I mention our names like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Oh wow, Putin, that didn't age well. But the list goes on. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brez of uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy right. form. Wait, Justin Trudeau was a young global leader along with half of his cabinet? Uh, how much influence does the World Economic Forum have? Well, the list of world leaders goes on. Schwab didn't mention New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, but she was in the program as well. So was French President Emmanuel Macron. That's a lot of world leaders. But let's go back to half of Trudeau's cabinet. Here are some examples. Chrystia Freeland, Canada's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. She's also on the World Economic Forum Board of Trustees, by the way. No conflict of interest there. In addition, there's Scott Bryson, who was president of the Treasury Board of Canada until 2019. And Melanie Jolie, the Minister of Canadian Heritage until 2018. So two former and one current Canadian official. That's not half of Justin Trudeau's cabinet. Could it be this guy is prone to just a little bit of exaggeration? But it's hard to say for sure because the Forum of Young Global Leaders Community website doesn't list all alumni, and old cohort rosters are difficult to find. In fact, Schwab might have been exaggerating other claims as well, since we couldn't find Putin or Trudeau listed on any of the cohort rosters either. Although we did find this Facebook post where Trudeau mentions the Young Global Leaders. Recently, some Canadians have expressed concern about the World Economic Forum's influence in Canadian politics. But when Member of Parliament Colin Carey asked about the Cabinet's connections to the World Economic Forum, the Parliament Speaker got a little touchy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I listened to my colleague's speech. I had a constituent that wanted me to ask a question about outside interference to our democracy. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum, and he bragged how his subversive WWEF World Economic Forum has quoted infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet. And I was wondering, in the interest of transparency, could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? 
My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know he was. I know that uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the 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 audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. Um, and I and I and I apologize. I don't know if if the member. Okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's try again. The honourable the, the, the honourable member for Timmins James Bay. Mr. Speaker, that member was promoting open disinformation. That's not debate. We have to call out disinformation. Uh, we'll get into debate again. Hmm. Strange. I didn't have any trouble hearing the question. And apparently the other member of parliament heard well enough to dismiss it as disinformation. But what has that MP so riled up? Kerry was just doing his job as an elected representative by asking a question posed to him by one of his constituents. You know, the people government officials are supposed to represent? And this is the big question. Who do these leaders represent? If their constituents voted for them to act in a way that didn't fit with the World Economic Forum's vision, who would these leaders choose? Their people or the World Economic Forum? Looking at how Germany, New Zealand, France, and Canada arrested protesters during the pandemic, it's not 100% certain these leaders would choose to listen to their people. On the other hand, Klaus Schwab has said he's very grateful for the loyalty of what he calls his Canadian constituency. I want to use this opportunity also to thank our Canadian constituency, which always has been a very loyal and very much engaged constituency here at the Forum. But now, I think with you, together with our constituents, Prime Minister, we can make sure that uh, in the future, we strengthen the cooperation even more with your country. I wonder how Canadians feel about that cooperation. And this is the issue with NGOs. Look, maybe you agree with the mission and worldview of the World Economic Forum. Maybe you think it's totally benign. But another NGO that you don't like can get just as much influence as the World Economic Forum. And remember, an NGO isn't really accountable to anybody other than its own leaders. It isn't countable to a public vote or a particular government. And when one NGO can influence this many world leaders, that's a problem. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments. And remember, America Uncovered is made possible by viewers like you. So please head over to our Patreon page. All it takes is a dollar or more per episode to keep the show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thank you for watching America Uncovered.